one of the classes I teach is community-based epidemiology. And in that, they have a project that they do which involves immersion in a population that's of interest to them that needs public health service of some capacity or another. So we have partnered with community agencies that um, we know offer the kind of experience we want our students to have. So for example, one of those is an agency in Rochester called Foodlink. And Foodlink is basically a distributor, a large-scale distributor for extra food, donated food, food that is still good but past a best use by date to um, social service agencies, neighborhoods, individuals that need food and have food scarcity. So they have many components to this agency and they have a very well put together volunteer program. So people can come in for four hours, they can come in for a day, they can come in every week. It depends on what they want to do and where they want to go. So we partner with groups like that and my students have to spend 10 hours um, with the population that they're trying to serve through an agency like this. So if my, one of my students selects um, you know, uh, children from low socioeconomic backgrounds as their population of interest, they have to do a description of this population using public health databases. Then they're going to go and spend 10 hours at somewhere like Foodlink serving that population, recognizing and talking to the people that are getting those services why they need the services. Is transportation their main barrier? Is the fact that they have food stamps their main barrier? Is the fact that there's no grocery stores within the city limits their main barrier? Um, and to have that experience of talking directly with the population that they're trying to provide the care for. Um, so what happens then is they get their certificate from Foodlink for what they were there for and what they did. And it says, you know, these were the hours. And then they have a written paper that they complete that is a description of the population, the health concerns in that population, how these service agencies are designed to meet some of those health care needs, and what the gaps are that are still remaining afterwards. So if you have well set up settings, you can um, run those kinds of assignments very effectively, and you can tell that they've been completed. And most of the time, the student feedback is really phenomenal. So even though in the beginning they may not be like, oh yeah, I get to go spend an afternoon on the food truck, um, they come back from that afternoon on the food truck because it's a well-designed assignment with much more insight than they may have gone in with. Um, so that's how we try to address it. Now, that being said, I also have some very motivated students who come in with um, a particular group they really want to work with that isn't someone I have this type of setup arranged for. And they have the option of doing that. They just have to provide me the information about where they want to go and then I make reach out and make contact with the place that they're going to determine it's an appropriate site or not. What they're going to do, they have to come up with their own objectives for what they hope to accomplish during that time serving that population. And those assignments are phenomenal when they come in because that's a student that really has a passion for what they're doing. And again, it meets the same objectives as I might doing an in-person class out in a community health setting. Um, it just does it in a slightly different way.